Want to learn how to connect to various data sources in Tableau? Then this video is for you. But before we proceed, make sure to hit the subscribe button on this channel. And if you like this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up. Now let's get into the video. Tableau provides a lot of options for you to connect to a data source. If your data is stored in a file, you can choose one of the options listed under connect to a file. If your data is stored on a server, then you can choose one of the options available under connect to a server. By clicking on more, we'll open up more options for you. If none of your source is listed here, you can click on other databases, ODBC, and make a connection. You might need help of somebody from your IT team to make that connection successful. Go ahead and click on more again to close this window. Tableau provides few sample data sources that are available under saved data sources. They've already made the connection and saved it for you. Sample EU Superstore, Sample Superstore, and Word Indicators. We will be using Sample Superstore for all our examples. So you can simply click on Sample Superstore connection here to create that connection and start working with it. However, I want to show you how this connection is made so we will create a connection from scratch. Since this file is available in Excel, that's what Tableau provides, we are going to use connect to a file in Microsoft Excel. So go ahead and click on it. That launches your Windows Explorer option. The sample superstore Excel file is available under 2018 folders. So click on it and go under ENUS and here you have it, sample superstore. You can click on it to select it and click open or simply double click on it to open it and launch the connection. There you have it. Now you are connected to Sample Superstore Excel data source. You can see it right here. Connection is with Sample Superstore Microsoft Excel. You will also see the names of all the worksheets or the tabs available in that Excel workbook. These are the worksheets and tabs that have the data in them. And you will also see any named ranges within that Excel workbook. So here they are. So let me open the Excel worksheet to show you how this looks like. Here's your Excel worksheet and you can see there is orders tab, people tab, and then returns. This is all the data we have. If you go back to your Excel, you can see order, people, return. In addition, you also have name ranges so you got order name range, people, and returns, which is listed right here. In case of a database connection, you will see list of all your tables and views listed here. You should familiarize yourself with all this data because you will be using that in your visualization and it'll help if you understand the data. Anytime you are going to do any kind of visualization and do analysis, it's good to get familiar with the data. Just to give you an idea, in this case, this is a made up data for a superstore and it contains three tables, orders, people, and return. Order contains the information about all the orders placed in this superstore. People is the name of the salespeople and then returns just contains the return information. The next step is to select the table or the tab that you're going to work with. We are going to be working with orders data. So you have to select that you can double click on it to select it or drag over in this area. Select orders and drag it. Now you have your orders table available to you. Now you have the data from orders table available to you for your visualization. You can work with multiple tables. In that case, you'll drag the other table and bring it here. For now, we are just going to work with orders table. I want to highlight a few things here. One, look at the connection. Right now it says live, which means it's directly connected to the Excel sheet. Any changes made to the underlying data in the Excel sheet, or if it was a database, then in the database, will be reflected here once you close this workbook and come back again. Since it has a live connection, it's going to pull the most recent information. However, it's not possible to always have a live connection. For example, if this worksheet was sitting on your corporate network 
or if you had a database that's sitting on your corporate network and you cannot get the live connection every time, say you are on a plane, in a hotel room, wherever. In that scenario, if you want to work, before you leave, you can do an extract. What extract is going to do is pull all the data and keep it with your workbook. So you're taking an extract of that data with you. By clicking here, you have extracted the data, which means if the underlying data changes, then you're not going to see that change here. You are just working on a static set of data. We're going to leave it live. And another thing to highlight here is filter. Say you have a huge amount of data, but you do not want to look at everything in that database. You want to work on a subset. You can define a filter to only pull the subset of data. So click on filter. Here you can add a filter. Click on add and you have all your fields available that you can choose from and create a filter. Say I want to limit the data by ship mode, so I'll pick ship mode and pick the ones that I want to work with. Maybe standard class, just for example here. Click on standard class and click OK. Click on OK again. Now you've got the standard class data only. You can create very complicated filters if you desire to do so in the same window. Few other things I want to highlight here on the columns. There is a small arrow button here. Clicking on that arrow will open up some other options. You can rename a field. Let's say you do not like the way it is stored in the database. You can rename it here. You can also copy the values so that you can paste them somewhere else. You can hide a particular column. You can also create aliases on the values. So let's say you do not like SC in this case. I'm gonna go over to ship mode. And let's say you do not like standard class and call it SC. Cause that's how you'll refer to it. Click okay. And now your data is all changed to SC. Click on it again. And you can go to aliases, click on it, change it, or you can clear it to go back to your original values. Click on OK, and we're back to original values. I'm also going to remove the filter so that we can play with the whole data set. Click on Edit, click on that filter, and click Remove. OK, now we have the full data set. So click on that arrow again. You can also create a calculated field. Calculated field allows you to form some function manipulation on the field and create a new field. Clicking on it will open a box. In this box here, you can create a calculated field by combining multiple fields or performing several functions, which are available in this window. If you do not see this window open, there is a little arrow. So you can see that here. Click on it, it'll collapse that window. And then when you click on it back, it opens it up. You can do any kind of manipulation that's permissible here. If your formula is correct, you will see the calculation is valid. If your formula is incorrect, then you will see an error message here. We are going to look at calculated fields when we create the graphs and charts. For now, go ahead and click on this X. You can also create a group of values. So if you want second class and standard class to be one group, you can create that here. Go ahead and click on create group and you will see all the values here. It'll create a new field called ship mode group and you can add the values as groups. I'm going to group first class and same day as one group and call it and click on group and I'm going to call it first class and second day. Then I'm going to group second class and standard class together. Click on these two columns. When you're selecting two columns, remember to press the shift key when you do the mouse down. This is on Windows. Similarly, you have to select two values, whatever operating system you're using. Once selected, click on group, and now second group is created. You can also choose to include others if no value is here. And go ahead and click on OK. Don't worry about the other values. We'll take a look at them as needed. Click on OK. And now you will see a new column created called Ship Mode Group. 
and it groups the values. So in this case, ship class and standards, ship and standard, if you scroll down, you'll see first class and same day. Grouping allows you to do analysis at a group level. When all the values essentially fall in a logical group, then you should go ahead and group them. You can also split the values from one column into two columns. Let's go over to customer name and click split. What we just did, as soon as we click split, you'll notice customer name was split into customer's first name and last name. Tableau automatically decides how it's going to split it. It looks at the value, in this case the customer name, and finds a common pattern between different values and then splits based on that. So in our example, it finds a space and it says, okay, I need to split using that space. So anything before the space is one column, anything after the space is another column. You can then rename this column to first name and last name. Anytime you make a mistake and you wanna go back to your previous stage, you can simply head over here and click on the back arrow. That's like undo button. Now we just undid it. You can also use a custom split. In the previous example, it took a space as our separator. It found a space between the name and split it. You can define your own separator. Say it's a comma or a colon. Whatever it is, you can define it and then do a split. Cancel it out. So there you have it. This is all your data manipulation you can do and get your data ready for visualization.